Hey guys, it's Ryan from Android Call Sim here, and I just want to give a quick little, um, I don't know if I want to call it a review or whatever, but basically, I know, looking at this here, you're seeing it's an iPhone, and for my work, I decided to try out an iPhone. I'm trying to be somewhat open-minded, so I gave it a, a couple weeks. I've been using it and trying to understand it more, and I wanted to give a sort of my thoughts on what am I missing out on on Android, on iPhone that I, I I sort of take for granted on on Android, so uh, I don't mean this to be a slant. I'm not going to look at you know app specifics. I'm going to look at just core apps and sort of core usability. So first off, one of the first things you know on my phone I have you know Google Now and widgets and everything. Obviously, you're going to miss out on that on iPhone. It's just going to be straight old, just rows and rows of apps. I mean, you can get folders. But other than that, it just looks pretty boring. But again, again, you could probably get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, the other thing I'm going to notice is that I get used to swiping on the keyboard, and you just can't do that on an iPhone. You can't even change the default i uh, keyboard. I don't know why that is, why they won't let that happen yet, but it just doesn't happen. Uh, the other thing you, you'll notice is that you cannot do sort of a sharing that we're used to sharing. Uh, if I go ahead and I grab a photo, there's a piece, this piece from the iPhone, but that's the iPhone 5. Um, I can share, there's a little button down here for share, but you can only share with specific apps and features that they've built in. You really don't have much other options than message, mail, iCloud, or Twitter. I want a Gmail, but I can't. I have to go and do that. Um, whereas on Android, we just go ahead and say, let's tap a picture and let's share that to whatever app out there has a sharing intent. So super, a lot of options. Um, the other thing is what I tend to use a lot is battery stats to be able to go into it and say, okay, well, let's take a look at my battery stats. What has been eating my battery on iPhone? We don't get that. We get... Let's go to general. I think it's in usage. And it just tells me since last full charge or whatever, it's been an hour. And definitely been noticing on iOS 7.1, it definitely kills the battery a lot quicker. Anyways, okay, so other than that, you can also get data stats. So let's go into the settings, data usage. And I can take a look at what apps have been using data. I can see what month, I can put caps on it. We've talked about that before. Again, on iPhone, you get, um, hmm. I don't even know if we have that. Oh, it's your sign, I've seen it somewhere. Cellular. Cellular usage period, so I get that. So how much, and it kind of gives me a little bit of an idea of how much I've been using, but it doesn't tell me um, since when, or forever, you know, I'd have to manually reset the statistics every month. So kind of, kind of a pain, and it doesn't limit it. Another weird thing I've noticed that is if I turn the phone off for a while, and let it sort of go to sleep, when I turn it back on, the Wi-Fi isn't on. It takes a few seconds for it to sort of kick into Wi-Fi. So it's just not going to, or it's going to sleep. Whereas on Android, we have that option to say, you know what, um, advanced settings and keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. I mean, it does use a battery a little bit heavier, but it saves some data that I, I don't have to worry about. Okay, it's not, it hasn't gone to sleep there, but I've noticed that every, you know, if I put it down for like, you know, a couple minutes or so, come back up, it has to, it, it'll be on 3G, it'll switch back over, etc. So minor annoyances, and that's just something you cannot do on iPhone, just automatically does that. The other thing is uh, is setting up your your, your calendar and some of that. Uh, for example, I don't want to use their email app. I, I just don't like it. Um, I'm really used to using Gmail for my work. Uh, we use that, but it doesn't automatically then bring in the calendar, and there's no Gmail calendar app they don't allow, or Google Calendar. So in order for me to bring the, my Google Calendar, I have to go into the settings and say, well, turn on my account, but sync only the calendar and contacts, but let Gmail handle it. was just, it's just 
kind of a nightmare. I mean, you can do that in other apps as well. The biggest sort of feature I, I really don't like is that often I, t I use it to take a picture and then email to one of the coworkers. So if I want to go ahead and say, grab it, pick a photo, take a picture, right? And I want to tap that picture to view it. The sharing is gone. I can only share if I've woken it up, go to photos, and then I can go and tap on it and then share it or whatever. But not if I do it from the lock screen, which is kind of a pain. That's something I, I get very used to doing on Android. I can just turn it on, go to the, oops. Go to the camera, you know, just swipe over and then go ahead and share whatever you want. So those are just some of the things I've noticed in the past couple weeks of using it. Um, and they're just iPhone limitations. So that there's no app workaround for some of those things. Anyways, uh, tell me what your guys' thoughts are. What is it about Android that you really like? Or what would you be missing out if you were to go from iPhone to Android? Uh, what are the features you would miss out on? Okay, let me know. Thanks.